Um, so it's my pleasure to um, introduce our next presenter. Uh, do we have Susan here? Excellent. OK, great. So Susan uh, Bratton is, is with Saver Health. It's a great name. And uh, they're leveraging AI to deliver personalized nutrition interventions to people with chronic disease. And they're using cancer as a proof of concept. So everyone, please welcome Susan. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Um, good afternoon. My name is Susan Bratton, and I'm the CEO and founder of Saver Health. Saber Health as a B2B digital health company that has developed a knowledge-based expert system to provide personalized, clinically and contextually appropriate nutrition interventions to people with cancer and other chronic medical conditions. We estimate that this is an over $50 billion market opportunity if we just focus on four therapeutic areas. And we pick these four because there's strong evidence of the benefit of nutrition, they're costly conditions, it aligns with the pharmaceutical company pipelines, which is where our primary clients are today, and there's a similar patient psychology. Whoops. I started Saver Health after I lost a very close friend to a glioblastoma. And I watched my friends struggle with nutritional issues and be told nutrition doesn't matter. And so I started doing research and I found that there's actually great evidence that shows that nutrition does matter and it matters to all the healthcare stakeholders. The thing that's most astounding to me is that at time of diagnosis, nine out of 10 cancer patients who are going to undergo treatment, so these are not terminal patients, nine out of 10 are already experiencing addressable nutritional issues when they receive the cancer diagnosis. Malnutrition is the number two secondary diagnosis in cancer patients, and it's the cause of a third of all cancer deaths. And if we think about cancer patients, we think about weight loss, and weight loss is highly correlated with mortality. Here's the problem. There's only one dietitian for every 2,700 cancer patients. And those dietitians are in the 71 NCI designated cancer centers where only 30% of patients are treated. The remaining 70% don't have access to a dietitian at all because they're treated in the community cancer setting. So there's a huge supply demand imbalance, there's a huge access gap, and 80% of patients never receive nutrition intervention. Addressing nutrition also benefits the healthcare enterprise. It benefits the payers through reduced ER visits and hospitalizations. If patients are admitted to the hospital, well-nourished patients have shorter length of stay. So we think there's a minimum of a three to four times ROI just by addressing the nutritional issues. From a pharma company perspective, better nutrition drives revenues directly through better adherence and indirectly through better outcomes because doctors will always recommend the therapeutic agent that has better outcome and lower symptom burden, and that's what better nutrition can do. So to address this problem, we have invented INA, the Intelligent Nutrition Assistant. And INA is powered by our knowledge platform, which I'll get to in a minute. Again, she provides personalized, clinically, and contextually appropriate interventions. She's dynamic, so feedback loops and machine learning are going to help us do better and better with the patient over time. She's available 24-7 on demand, and she's powered by this platform that I'm going to show you. She's HIPAA compliant, and uh, we've designed the back end to work with our pharma clients, legal, medical, and regulatory, which we have quite a lot of experience with. It's a B2B model similar to a SaaS model. So if you think about um, INA and what we're trying to do. We're trying to provide a virtual intervention. And so if you think of the functions of the brain, you split it into two. On one side, you have information processing. You take in this information. So branching logic, expert rules. On the other side of the brain is knowledge. That is, what do I do when this combination of facts presents itself in that specific combination or permutation? Together, that's INA's brain and matching algorithms provide the patient with the right intervention at the right time from our corpus of content, which is the world's largest database of evidence-based uh, nutrition interventions. 
Um, we're in the early stages here. And so right now, Ina's brain is being trained su through supervised machine learning. So we have a team of dietitians who are training her and connecting the neurons as we get more and more patients on the platform. From a value perspective, the thing I'm going to focus on here is the data. On the back end, we're finding that the data is very valuable to all of our clients, and so we're very focused on that. And if you think about it, things like longitudinal data, symptoms over time, um, frequency and severity of the symptoms, PROs, real world evidence. Data is where it's all at, and obviously this is an AI conference, so that would make a lot of sense to everybody in the room. We're looking at the data right now to help us refine and enhance the intervention. But at scale and large numbers, we believe the data can do two things. The first is enable us to provide personalized nutrition to the patient level. So think of a food RX. But also, at a population-based level, we think there's going to be some very valuable data insights. And of course, the data we're finding is, is valuable to our, our clients right now. So why did we pick oncology? We picked oncology because it's a very complex problem set. And we thought if we build our mousetrap on a complicated problem, then moving into other therapeutic areas will not be such a big and heavy lift. The other thing is, in order to help our cancer patients, we have to not only address their cancer and their side effects, but their comorbid medical conditions. So a lot of the rules and the interventions are already developed. SAMR is unique in the market, in the nutrition market, I should say, in that we're really taking a medical approach to this. So we only hire credentialed professionals. We stick to the evidence-based literature, fully referenced and cited, and we're committed to conducting research, both to quantify the impact on clinical endpoints, but also measures of financial ROI. And so right now, we are, do, we are beginning two studies with MD Anderson starting in January. We're doing a lung cancer study with the University of Colorado, and um, we are doing a breast cancer study with Novartis, and we have a number of other studies that are in various stages of development. But the point is we want to validate this tool. The net net of the medical approach is that we've been really fortunate to have worked with every company um, here for many years. I have a great team. Uh, Jessica was my first employee. She's an oncology credentialed registered dietitian. When we talk about Ina, we like to say that we shrunk Jessica's brain. But it's really the combination of lots of dietitians, nurses, and doctors who went into uh, building Ina. Marissa is a uh, tenure veteran of Sloan Kettering. She worked in clinical nutrition research there before joining us. Kerry Jardine is our chief technology architect. He and his team have built the mousetrap. And Jenny recently joined us. She comes from industry, working with pharma and consulting. I also have great team, board of directors, advisors. David Rabin is our um, chief medical officer. He just recently went over to Genentech to head up long breast and, and two other areas, uh, rare tumors, and I'm forgetting, forget, head and neck. Um, so the thing I would like to leave you with is that many people talk about nutrition as a social determinant. And I think that really underplays the role nutrition really has. If you think about it, social determinant narrows it down to only people who are food insecure. But we eat three times a day. And the evidence shows that nutrition matters. So our goal is to use data to show that nutrition is an effective intervention to offer alongside other cancer treatments, and ultimately in other therapeutic categories. Thank you. Do they come up on the screen or? Uh, it may, but so far people have just been asking them. No. Okay. So either is fine. Just scream. Yeah, so um, Spanish is the next, and that's, that's on the roadmap for next year because so many people in the United States speak Spanish. Um, so that's, that's a logical. Um, in and around cultural differences, we're already, we're already working on that and, and seeing that, but, but I think there's a lot more development that we're going to need to do there. And if you think about it, even as we go global, um, you know, that's going to be a whole 
thing as well. And, and it may be that partnering is the way to go in terms of food, recipes, that, that type of um, support. Okay. Oh. So we look at about 10 variables right now. They're patient reported. Um, in all of these clinical studies, we are also getting um, data from the electronic medical record. So we're, we're getting biometrics and, and some things like that. Um, the ultimate goal is to, is to actually get the feed from the EMR. Um, we're not doing that quite yet, but that's, that's really the goal. Um, it reduces the burden on the patient, and the quality of the data is going to be much better. So most of the data that we intake right now is structured data. Um, we have a way of, of intaking it, but that'll be even more so when it's, um, when it's from the medical record. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>